I'm going to talk to Hugh McDermott, who's the Senior Vice President of Business and Sales Development for ESS Inc. based in Oregon, about a new technology uh, for long-term storage for utilities, iron flow batteries. Uh, before I do that, I want to encourage everybody to connect with us on social media. You should be able to see the handles on the screen. So welcome to the interview, Hugh. Great to be here. Thank you for the uh, opportunity, Mark. Now, maybe let's start with uh, an explanation of what an iron flow battery actually is. Sure. Uh, so it's a, it's, a, it's a different type of battery than most of us would know, you know, you know that goes into your laptop, cell phones, and so forth. Uh, those typically today are lithium ion batteries. Our battery is uh, one where the electrolyte that makes up an electrochemical battery is actually external to the battery. And so our liquid, if you will, the electrolyte is composed of iron saturated in salt water. It's as simple as it sounds. Um, and what we, what we invented was a, a way to uh, process that uh, in, in a way that you can actually generate voltage. And so what physically is happening in a battery, our batteries, is we've got this power module that we call it, or a, or a stack, we use the term interchangeably, and it's kind of a sandwich construction. There's a layer of graphite plates, there's a membrane, there's a, another layer of graphite plates, another membrane and so forth. And what's happening is the liquid is flooding up, if you will, on both sides of that membrane. And during the charge cycle, what's happening is the iron is electroplating onto the carbon. And what makes our battery unique is several things. Uh, one is that that process effectively, or for all intents and purposes, is inert. And we can repeat that charging and discharging that battery for thousands and thousands of cycles without the battery wearing out. Everyone knows how your battery and your cell phone is great on day on year one, but by year two, year three, you have to charge it halfway through the day to get through the day. Um, our battery will go for decades without that effect happening. Um, second is that being uh, iron and salt water, it's super safe for the people and planet. So very environmentally, one of the most environmentally uh, sustainable batteries that are out there. Now, my understanding is that the costs of an iron flow battery are really quite reasonable and uh, uh, work within the economics of, a, a, you know, like a utility that's uh, trying to imp integrate renewables into its grid. Uh, that's right. So uh, utilities typically make their investments on long, long uh, duration, long uh, time horizon. So they look at multi-decade investments. So uh, having a technology like ours that can last literally for decades um, helps get costs, you know, you get more use out of that single investment. A battery like ours that you can use without degrading it, you can get more throughput, in other words, for that same investment, further lowers the cost. And so a workhorse battery or a workhorse asset is like what you'd, all utilities, uh, you know, absolutely like to see. And so that combination of long life, higher throughput uh, gives you the lowest cost. And if you think about the materials that make up our battery, it's iron, it's plastic, it's salt water. Um, aluminum, copper. You know, there's there's nothing exotic in there. There's nothing that's hard to source or has to come from countries that we don't want to do business with, or um, or has labor practices that uh, extract minerals that you know are objectionable. It's all uh, very easily to source materials that make up our battery. Now, my understanding is that the iron flow battery can can uh, store energy up to twelve hours. Is that correct? That's what we that's what we're shipping today. So the way to think about it is that that plating process where the iron is sticking to that plate of, of uh, carbon, um, if you will, uh, is building up a thickness. And we've designed the battery right now that we can support a thickness that will be equivalent to 12 hours of battery. Now, where we hope to get in a, in a few years is to have that extended out to 16 hours. Now, 16 hours, what's magical about that number? If you pair that with say eight hours of, of solar per day, you've now got basically an around the clock uh, energy resource where you can have renewable energy around the clock with a battery to carry you through the evening, night, and through the morning until the sun comes up again. But 12 hours is what we are currently shipping in the current state of our technology today. Right, and that compares to lithium ion batteries, which I understand are generally around four hours. Um, two to four. Um, they've managed to figure out a way to make them economic at four. And Technically, you can make them six, eight, 12. You can go as far out as you want, but the, the cost factor doesn't get any cheaper. You're just basically doubling, tripling, quadrupling the number of batteries. In our case, if you wanted to do an eight hour battery today and next year you wanted to go to 10 or 12, you just add liquid. 
And that liquid is iron saturated salt water. So it can't get any simpler, any cheaper than iron and water. <clears throat> now, quite often we're seeing, uh, uh, you know, wind and solar farms paired up with storage. Uh, so if you were to take the cost per kilowatt hour of say a wind or storage, a wind or solar uh, farm, and then add your storage, uh, what would it be per kilowatt hour? Well, as you know, Mark, I'm, uh, uh, these are all very site specific uh, situations and no two projects have exact e economics, but generally speaking, where we see solar kind of being in the US today is around the, the four or five, six cent kind of per kilowatt hour range. Uh, a battery like ours um, can, it can get down to about two to three cents of added cost on that. So if you project now a few years in the future where solar is gonna to continue to come down and our battery costs will obviously also continue to come down as we scale, um, we foresee by mid decade, the possibility where you could have a renewable resource paired with our battery being well under five cents uh, as, a, as a total resource. And that's really exciting because that's where most of the baseload energy generation currently lives today. And so in terms of market size and an opportunity to really decarbonize the grid, that's the kind of the, the next holy grail, if you will. How are utilities responding to your new technology? Uh, lots of enthusiasm? Uh, tremendous amount, um, particularly on the West Coast where uh, California, as many would know, has been kind of a pioneer in in adopting renewable energy. Uh, fundamentally, any utility or any state or any region that has a uh, goal to decarbonize its grid, uh, you will have to have uh, longer and longer duration storage as part of that solution. Um, what we have found and the studies have shown in the real life ex experiences is that when you get above about 20 to 25 percent renewable energy on your grid, you start needing six, seven, eight hour duration energy storage, which is really the kind of the, where the sweet spot starts to kick in for us. And so the utilities in the West have been extremely uh, excited. We've announced a project. Uh, we're doing our first one for San Diego Gas and Electric. Uh, we've got discussions with all the major players in the West, but internationally, it's also true where you've got some of the largest uh, multinational utilities and developers who see, who see what the, is coming on the horizon, that they know that there's, there's whole continents that are looking to decarbonize, and this is going to be part of the solution to getting there. And so we've got utility sales in Europe, we've got utility sales in Australia, um, and in Latin America, and, and those projects are in construction and various forms of commissioning as we speak. <clears throat> Well, uh, you thank you very much for this. Really appreciate your insight and good luck with your uh, with your battery. Thank you. Stay tuned. <laughs>